Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this presentation. Uh, in this presentation, my name is Balaji Tirajula. I work in business unit uh, cloud and IP in Ericsson. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about network slicing and uh, how, what is the important role of the network slicing in, as part of the 5G networks. So at the beginning of the presentation, I'm going to cover uh, uh, what's happening in the telecom industry and the pace that is taking place. Followed by that, I'm going to cover what, because of that, uh, changes uh, in uh, you know, uh, businesses in telecom networks, uh, how that will affect the network itself. And thirdly, I'll talk about uh, the role of network slicing, how it will uh, actually create new opportunities for the operators in the area of the 5G networks, and they can deliver services to different vertical industries. So this is the pace of change I'm talking about. So if you see in the screen, uh, it took about 100 years to connect a billion uh, uh, people, right? The uh, telephone connectivity. And then it only took 25 years to connect the next 5 billion uh, people. And now we also forecast by 2020, uh, there will be about 26 billion connected devices, uh, meaning uh, people to people, things to things, things to people. Uh, those are the communication. Uh, uh, that type of communication will take place. We also uh, uh, stay by our uh, original vision of 50 billion devices as well. So we are on path towards that. So now you see what's happening in the, in, in the pace of change in the telecom industry. So here, uh, as part of that, what I'm showing here is uh, what will happen is uh, one network that will deliver services to many, many vertical industry. For example, uh, both the SDN and the virtualization NFE, it's actually creating a programmable network and a service aware network that will actually expose certain network capabilities to the business layer. Then we can define those services to different vertical uh, industries. For example, what will happen, some of the vertical industries uh, take, uh, um, uh, uh, for example, the power plants or uh, you know, transport industry or a shipping industry. Uh, some of this uh, uh, industry will need uh, latency require very, very low latency requirements and high security requirements. And some of them will require high bandwidth. So, so that means each slice will have a different characteristics as we establish. Um, so the next slice, this is very interesting. So we talked about uh, you know, the vertical industry, how the services will be delivered. Now what are the key functions or the components uh, that will enable this? So if you take at the very first on the left hand side on the bottom, virtualization. So that is the first key step, network function virtualization. As we virtualize our current telecom networks, for example, if you take a mobile network, uh, the virtual EPG, virtual MME, virtual IMS, many functions that will be virtualized, right? That's the first step. The second also important functionality to deliver that network slicing that is required is software defined network SDN. SDN will play a major role. For example, take uh, SDN will create connectivity for the intra data center connectivity. As we create the VMs and the VNF, the dynamic connectivity is done by the SDN controller. And uh, so basically, for example, uh, connecting the VMs using VXLAN or MPLS or GRE, all this connectivity is done by the SDN controller. And also the inter DC connectivity. So once you have done the intra data center, you need to connect all the way to the radio base stations to deliver the mobile services, right, for the network slicing. So the SDN also will connect end-to-end -end connectivity dynamically. The next important thing is distributed cloud. This is very important. So what's happening in the industry today is uh, you have the radio network, where some components of the radio network will be coming towards uh, uh, local data centers. So it will move from the radio base station towards the local data center, what we call distributed local data centers, right? At the same time, some of the core functions from the central cloud will also move towards the distributed data cloud. For example, mobile core, EPG, MME. So you'll see this uh, movement of these uh, functions uh, to the distributed uh, cloud, more closer to the users. That's another aspect and the key function to enable this network slicing. Then the, third, uh, the fourth part is the network slicing itself that will create a logical network slice uh, from, the, from the cloud to the transport to the mobile access or any access. So many of us are aware, uh, people who work in the IP industry, we know it was network slicing always there. A logical uh, network that we build on transport network, for example. If you take L3 VPN, L2 VPN, E-Line, E-Line services, they are technically a logical network, right, on a physical network. So we, had, we have seen the network slicing, but 
in the context of 5G networks, we are talking network slice on a whole new level. Here we are talking about including the OSS BSS system will be network sliced. So that means you can expose the entire network as a service to your vertical industries. So that will enable the automation and delivery of services. That's, uh, you know, uh, that's what it will happen when you create these network slices. Then also um, the key part uh, to all these things to glue. Actually what we are doing first of all, we are creating a lot of tools. We are making the our network very smart. That's what all these people, you know, people come here. That's what end of the day, open stack, open daylight, making the network agile, programmable, and expose it in abstracted way. All the industry people are doing that. Once you have done that, a smart network, you also need a smart management system, smart analytics system, and the orchestration. If you don't have that, the networks are great, but you're not delivering the service in a smart way, efficient way to the end users because that's where the automation comes. The smart networks itself does not deliver that automation because you're looking at services that needs to be delivered in automated fashion. So the top is a key layer. Then here in this slide, what I'm saying is uh, as part of the management and orchestration, there are uh, key things to remember in network slicing. So you create a blueprint, we use Tosca template, you know, the open sources OASIS. So with the Tosca template, you can create actually a blueprint of that network slice. That means uh, characteristics of the radio network, characteristics of the transport, and also what virtual network function that needs to be defined. All of this for a particular specific service for a specific industry, you, you create that in the template, right? That's based on your uh, network capability. We cannot create a service and expose to the end user without knowing the capability of the network, beyond the capabilities of the network. So that's very important to know the capability of the network. And that is exposed to the business layer, right? So you can see the different slices, for example, mobile broadband is one slice, the massive uh, MTC, a machine type communication, this is for IoT industry, that's another slice. It could be slices for uh, different sectors, right? Then under the context of network slicing, the network resources is actually uh, the VNFs itself a network resource, the OSS BSS itself a network resource. So it's not your ports or the NIC boards are network resources, they're physical resources. The entire function is a network resource and the transport is a network resource. So all will be part of the blueprint as you create one large service network as a service to a enterprise customer or a vertical industry. That's a key point in this slide. What are the challenges uh, in the 5G network as we transform slowly? So today the services are provisioned pretty much in a static way, some of them a little bit semi-dynamic way uh, by our operators. And then in the context of 5G, it's just actually it's happening today itself. We're delivering multiple services over a single network. That will actually it'll be amplified in 5G networks. So the network has to be prepared for that. And also the management system and the orchestration system and the analytic solution needs to be ready for that. So those are the challenges. The solution is we will virtualize and modularize the virtual network function, key functions, into a smaller micro functions. And then the 5G network slicing will let the operator and the users to dynamically provision services. What is, what is the result? The result is a well-optimized network that can actually deliver services for each and different users, different vertical industries. Okay, uh, in the interest of time, I'll just cover uh, quickly about the network slice architecture. So as you see here, as I was explaining, uh, there is a three layers here. One is the business governance, then there is a network governance, and the actual network itself where the slices are physically created, logical slices. So as you see, the network governance layer is a key component of it. It creates a blueprint based on the capability of the network, and it exposes to the business layer. Now the business layer, as you guys know, many of us uh, being in, uh, working with the operators, it has a product catalog and a service catalog. With the product catalog, actually the operator exposes the services to the end users or the businesses, different businesses. The, so they will define, okay, this is the product that will cost you so much money. That comes to the order care, flows through the system, and then with the service catalog, it will decompose and send it to the uh, network governance layer. But with respect to network slicing, so we actually once you create the you know, network slice, we expose that blueprint to the business layer. What they will do is, depending upon the verticals that they're going to deliver the services, for example, for an IoT, 
uh, security is a key factor, and the latency could be you know, much, much below uh, you know, microseconds, right? And so those are the key parameters. As input parameters, they will insert into the network, into the blueprint, and send back to us. And if you have a time, uh, I know today is the last day. There is a demo. We have a demo for this exactly uh, to show that. And then uh, the network slice governance layer will actually uh, create the network slice, logical network slice on the network. So it is a product that I'm trying to show where uh, the Ericsson Network Manager is part of that one component of the network governance, right? So as you see, we compose and expose the network slice to the business layer, and we'll do the full lifecycle management of that network slice. And then also it does the resources configuration, and also it will do the assurance for the lifecycle of the network slice. I'll cover in my next presentation about analytics and assurance a little bit. Okay. So actually, so once we get, uh, as you see, there is an orchestration engine. So once we get the blueprint, that blueprint will go into the orchestration engine. Orchestration engine will fire up many workflows. It could be a couple of workflows and the sister workflows for EPG. One could be for the IMS. One could be for the MME. One could be for the transport. It's all simultaneously fired up. And then it will pick up the configuration templates. Based on that, it will go and configure the network. So last slide, what are the key takeaways? So network slicing. Uh, we see it's a key major catalyst for ICT transformation. The slices will be created automatically, dynamically, and very securely. And obviously, uh, the network slicing will create service agility and network agility for the operators. And it will be it will make a network to be used in optimized fashion. Very high utilization of the assets. Obviously, because it will enable them the network slicing as part of the 5G networks to enter into the new verticals. So that means a top line, good top line growth for the industry. And also, obviously, it will lower down because it's automation and uh, service agility and network agility lower down the costs. Thank you.